Welcome to Let's Talk Sarcoidosis. I'm your host, Dorothea Howard, and I'd like to welcome back my guest co-host, Mr. Richard Hanna. Oh, thank you. How are you doing today, Rich? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm glad you're here. I'm, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And today's guest, we have Kimberly Price, and she's a uh, Reiki master. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here today. And we're happy that you're here well, to help you. us out. <laughs> thank <Welcome>. you. <laughs> so, um, Kimberly, what is Reiki? Um, Reiki is a Japanese technique mm -hmm. um, for, that, for stress reduction, and um, it also helps to promote relaxation. Mm -hmm. And when the body is in that state, what happens is the body is allowed to do what it does best, which is to heal. Okay. Um, Reiki is administered by a practitioner mm -hmm. through um, laying on of the hands on different parts of the body, different places and different points on the body. Mm -hmm. um, there is a common belief that there is an unseen life force energy that runs through all of us, mm -hmm. an electromagnetic energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes what happens, just like if you had a car, that energy can get out of balance. Wow. It can get out of balance. And when that energy is out of balance, then you might find that things start to happen where um, you may get ill. Mm. Uh, you may have an organ that may not function properly. Okay. Um, so di different things cause, can cause the body to get out of um, balance. Wow. And re um, administering Reiki helps to put the body back into balance. It works with the mind, mm -hmm. body, and what we call the spirit. Okay. Wow, it's interesting how powerful our bodies are. Absolutely. And, and we don't even know how to use all that great that greatness sometimes. Oh, right. Um, now, what happens, I just like to imagine myself coming to your practice. Sure. And having sarcoidosis mm -hmm. and living with it for the past 30 years. Sure. Um, what type of treatment would I receive? So I'm walking into your office, I have an appointment. Mm -hmm. Kind of take me through the steps of what, you know, patients like uh, myself would experience. Okay, so when you come into my practice, mm -hmm. first off, I would have you fill out a form. Okay. Um, giving me a little bit of information about yourself, if you're um, taking certain medications, mm -hmm. things of that nature, and then maybe what your areas of concerns are. Mm -hmm. Some people share, some people don't. It really is their choice. Okay. I would have them come back into um, my office. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I administer my services on a massage table. So when they come in, um, I talk with them, I answer any questions that they have mm -hmm. so that they're very nice and comfortable with um, what's about to happen. So I explain a little bit about what's going to happen beforehand. Mm -hmm. When they come in, I have them lie on the table, on their back, um, with Reiki, unlike some other um, services, you are fully dressed, just less your shoes. Oh. So it's, okay. it's something where you're fully dressed when you come in, so you're lying on the massage table. Mm -hmm. And um, what I do as a practitioner is I will, I always have um, my clients do a little bit of deep breathing because I'm also a hypnotherapist. Oh, wow. So I Jeez. guide them through a little bit of relaxation, just talking with them about, you know, taking deep breaths in and okay. out just to get nice and relaxed because some people may naturally be a little anxious about coming right. in. Right. So from there, once they're nice and relaxed, with my hands, I will um, scan their body from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet mm -hmm. to see what I feel is going on in the body because wow. sometimes we may have symptoms mm -hmm. um, going on in the body, but it may be coming from some other place. Right. You may be having issues with your stomach, but it may be based on something that's going on in your emotional field even. Wow. So I will scan them from head to toe mm -hmm. um, with my hands, and then from there um, I'll do an assessment of what I feel is going on, and mm -hmm. I'll go about the session, which would be light and gentle hand placements mm -hmm. um, about the head area, um, the neck, mm -hmm. um, across the heart um, area, the hands, mm -hmm. the midsection, knees and feet typically on the um, first session, and wow. um, the head area, sides of the head, top of the head, back of the head. Mm -hmm. And um, the session lasts about, my sessions typically are an hour long. Oh, wow. That's, I spend, that's really deep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot, and, and it's very relaxing. It's very relaxing, right. you know, very relaxing I can imagine. Session. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to picture that hand scan. It's like we have the power right in our hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we all have right. the power in oh, our right. hand. We, we all 
are, you know, we all come here with um, different gifts. Uh -huh. um, as a Reiki practitioner, it's just like some people have the gift of um, comfort and uh -huh. healing uh -huh. and things of that nature. And uh, for me, uh, my most prominent gift was healing with my hands. Wow. And so um, I took a course uh -huh. to learn how to use that ability in Reiki. And we all can, wow. we all can learn. That's okay. a blessing. <laughs> so when we come to see you, like, what would I feel when I receive a Reiki? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will tell you what my clients tell me when they come in. I can talk about what I feel, but typically what I hear from my clients. Um, what you may feel when you come in is 99.9% .9 of the people that come in say that they go into a very deep state of relaxation wow. when they're there. Wow. And I tell you, they go, they go almost into a trance-like mm -hmm. state or like that half, a, half awake, half asleep state, mm -hmm. and they get very relaxed. So um, as I'm working with them, what they tell me they feel when I'm working about the head area, um, they'll feel heat coming from my hands, mm. oh. which is the heat that comes from what we call our God force, our universal life force. You wow. know? So um, that flows through um, mm -hmm. a practitioner like myself mm -hmm. and um, is transmitted into the body of the client and the way that they may feel it as solid heat, mm -hmm. relaxa oh relaxing God. heat. Right. It may feel like an intermittent type of a sensation, almost like a heartbeat. Um, or either, sometimes it may feel a little comforting, like if you've had your hands fall asleep or your foot oh, fall asleep. Absolutely. But if you can imagine <laughs> that type of a sensation, but in a relaxing oh sense, not uncomfortable, but very okay. relaxing. Hmm. Um, they also um, get a feeling of being very light like a uh, uh, weight is lifted off of them, um, where the body is at total relaxation, mm -hmm. but the mind is free to think. And typically when you come in, what you may be experiencing is you might have a lot of things racing through your mind, mm -hmm. but typically when you're in that state, you're thinking with your higher mind, let's say your higher mental state, which would be more um, in a spiritual sense of thinking, um, Wow. With your more spiritual mind, let's right. say that. Wow. And what conditions can be helped by Reiki? Um, truly, just about any condition can be helped by Reiki. It really depends on what the person needs when they, when they come in. Um, because when the body and the mind is in a very relaxed state, mm -hmm. uh, when you go through that whole process, um, we feel better. Um, the body can do what it needs to do when we're in a relaxed state to heal itself. Mm -hmm. You know, the body is beautiful and miraculous mm -hmm. by design. Oh, absolutely. The body can heal itself when it is in its best state. If you think about it as a child, mm -hmm. you don't have child, uh, children who get sick that often. You know, they're normally, most of the time, kids are pretty happy and running around, enjoying life. But as we get older and we start having life experiences, there are things in our lives that may weigh us down and impact us emotionally. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have things that come up emotionally for you, um, it starts to create a chain reaction in the body. You have stress hormones yes. that yes. cause a reaction in the body. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we go through in life is really based on where we are from an emotional standpoint, the things that have happened. Right. And it causes a chain reaction in different areas of the body, including our organs. So wow. True. Yeah. You know, it, it almost makes you think about sometimes we're our worst enemy, yeah. <laughs> you right. know, as far as our body anyway, right. you know, um, bringing all these stressful situations mm -hmm. on ourselves and, and making our body just break down, um, mm -hmm. especially for, you know, our viewers, mm -hmm. um, the viewers that have also have sarcoidosis like myself. Mm -hmm. Or even if they don't have sarcoidosis and they just want to learn about, you know, Reiki, mm -hmm. um, what are the benefits of Reiki? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are lots of benefits. If you can imagine being in a state where you feel relaxed mm -hmm. and less stress, you know, we have to admit everyone has stress. Oh, yes. yes. Everyone Absolutely. has stress. Yes. And if you can imagine um, a therapy that helps reduce the amount of stress we mm -hmm. have in our life, um, when you spend that hour in a state where you're totally relaxed, mm -hmm. you're able to let go and release, and um, you're in a heightened mental, mental state, mm -hmm. 
in that state when you can think through the issues that you have and think with what we call your higher mind and work out your life issues, we tend to be happier. And um, you know, you have all of those happiness hormones <laughs> flowing we through like the body, that. True, yeah. which you know promotes wellness. They say when you laugh, when you know laughter. Right helps to heal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine when you're joyful and you're happy mm -hmm. and you're relaxed and less stressed, mm -hmm. the body can do what it needs to do mm -hmm. to heal because it's not attacking itself mm -hmm. with these stress hormones and causing other issues in the body. Wow, well, yeah. I need to laugh on with this osteoporosis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, heal me forever. <laughs> what I find what I find in my office when I'm, um, we have clients to come in, mm -hmm. um, people are generally happier mm -hmm. when they do more of the things in life that they want to do mm -hmm. right. versus the things that they don't want to do. Yeah, that's true. So um, being in a mental state where you can make better decisions and you're more relaxed mm -hmm. puts you in a very good place and in a healthier state. Hmm. You know, um, with all this relaxation mm -hmm. and uh, people that come to your practice, mm -hmm. um, are there any side effects to anyone getting, you know, Reiki, uh, Reiki, I'm sorry, Reiki sure, therapy? Okay. <laughs> um, I would say the only side effects is an increased state of relaxation, mental clarity. Well, that's a good side effect. Uh, sure, <laughs> Reiki, Reiki is all about love. Okay. It's about that universal love and life force energy. And with all of that, that's what most of us are looking for is love. Mm -hmm. And that's what it promotes. Mm -hmm. That's what it promotes, a sense of um, overall wellness. So mm -hmm. as far as side effects that are negative, no. I haven't, I haven't had any reports of any, and okay. I haven't read about any. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Can a person treat themselves or learn how to perform Reiki? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> so um, yes, as a Reiki, um, as a Reiki master, I'm also certified to teach Reiki, and a person can actually treat themselves or even um, learn to treat others mm -hmm. by taking a course and becoming attuned as a Reiki practitioner, um, even as a level one practitioner. Mm -hmm. So they can come in and learn how to. Um, work with the energy mm -hmm. and um, how to self-treat and self-administer Reiki as well as even after the first course administering Reiki to others oh, wow. if, if they would want to. Mm -hmm. I actually practice Reiki on myself every day Wow! because the healer also needs to be healed so uh, I that's do. That's a good point. <laughs> that's right. So that's right. I administer right. Reiki on myself every day and my life changed my life has changed because of it. I'm a, a much calmer, mm -hmm. happier, right. milder person, and I look at life. Um, I look at life abundantly. I would right. say. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that makes you more effective. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. And, and does um, insurance cover Reiki treatments? I mean, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the question we all question. I get, I got that's that question a, a lot. And right now, Reiki is just coming into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So um, people would have to check with their insurance companies. There are insurance companies that may provide um, provide coverage, but you would have to check with your insurance company and ask. Okay. Okay. So how long have you uh, been a Reiki um, practitioner? I've been a Reiki practitioner for five years. Wow. Yes. Wow, five years of stress-free living. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say totally stress-free. Right? Stress <laughs> Reducing the stress, yes. like you said. Yeah, I would say, um, <laughs> yes. I would say reduce stress or learning how to cope with it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Being in a more positive, looking at life as half full versus half right. empty. And that's know? a great way yeah. to look at it. Absolutely. And you know, uh, before we do any contact information, we'll save that for a little bit later okay. on the show. But you said something earlier that sure. really piqued my interest okay. when you said that you're a hypnotherapist yeah. as well. Now, that, hey, we got to <laughs> talk about that. Right. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that because that's an interesting way of you know, healing people. So tell us a little bit about it and, you know, what type of patients receive this. Just kind of elaborate on that. Oh, sure. Um, with the hypnosis, um, hypnosis actually complements Reiki as well. Uh -huh. So I use both in my practice. Uh -huh. So I may have someone come in and they, you know, a lot of our, um, 
issues, let's say our life issues that we have mm -hmm. are all rooted in something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it comes from sometimes we don't know but um, in using hypnotherapy when necessary what you'll find is that it helps the conscious mind and the subconscious mind mm -hmm. work together in agreement because let's say if I have a person that comes in for um, smoking cessation they want to stop smoking for mm -hmm. health reasons mm -hmm. um, there, there are a couple things that um, they may want to do on a surface level they may feel like oh I'm gonna stop smoking mm -hmm. but then you know we all have that negative self-talk that's in the back of our mind or that mm -hmm. little voice in our head that says oh you really can't do that right. you need that um, or you'll never be able to stop you, you know mm -hmm. you understand what I mean yes. by that <laughs> so what um, hypnosis is able to do is to um, kind of get the conscious mind mm -hmm to um, step aside and get the subconscious and the conscious mind to work together in agreement mm. so that um, internally we have a belief of what it is we feel we want to do on a conscious level. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean, how long is, are the therapy sessions? Are they just as long as the Reiki sessions? Or, um, um, yeah, it I mean, kind of depends on the therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah that mm -hmm. um, someone is coming in for. Mm -hmm. But on an average, probably anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer, depending on what issue we're working on. Wow. Because we can work on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of issues with um, I'm sure. hypnosis. <laughs> so can, can those treatments help people with like issues of focusing or um, job, getting things done, stop procrastinating? Because you know, yeah. it's the new year, oh, people right. are gonna make these resolutions. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. And, yes. and, you know, this, it's just one of those things they're probably thinking about, you know, <laughs> can she help, help someone, they might not be feeling sick, but they are sick and tired of procrastinating. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because sometimes um, the things that we do, pro procrastination is kind of a habit. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so <laughs> hypnosis is very good for, mm -hmm. let's say breaking bad habits, mm -hmm. getting rid of habits. Yeah. And when we do it, um, when we get into that subconscious mind and we're reprogramming how mm -hmm. we think, it's a wonderful thing and it, and it does work. But now we'll have to say a lot of um, people may question under hypnosis, oh, I don't, I don't want to try hypnosis because the person may have me um, barking like a dog <laughs> or clucking like a chicken. I but I will tell you that under hypnosis, uh -huh. a person will never do under hypnosis, mm -hmm. what they wouldn't do. And, and just in everyday life. Absolutely. Right. You won't, and for example, if you want to come and you want to stop smoking, mm -hmm. if all you really want to do is cut back, mm -hmm. what will happen is the person may go from smoking a pack a day down to three, three I'm sorry, three cigarettes a day. Okay. Because really, they don't want to totally stop smoking. Right. They really just want it to cut back. Right. right. So, um, you know, no fear in that. Right. Um, now me, I may cluck like a chicken because <laughs> I can I can clown around sometimes. So that may be something that I would that do. That you would do there, <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So um, with that um, hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. with your uh, clients, do mm -hmm. you have uh, clients that come in and they may want to have this because of health problems? Sure. Or, um, can you give us some examples of clients coming in and they want that hypnotherapy? Say, for instance, now I don't know if this is happening, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes when you're on prednisone mm -hmm. with having sarcoidosis, sure. sometimes you can't control your appetite. Right. So, do you have people that come in because they have problems with appetites and taking small portions versus I gotta eat, 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 eat? Sure. So what do, you, what, is you, what do you do for things like that? Um, we'll maybe do a suggested therapy to work um, on mm -hmm. the subconscious mind mm -hmm. um, and talk to the subconscious and ask ourselves mm -hmm. or program ourselves to um, not eat as much, let's mm -hmm. say to not eat as much, and also put in there why we don't want to eat as much and um, what the end result is going to be if we don't. So um, I, I definitely do that for people that come in. I, I have some clients that have chronic pain. Oh yeah, that's a good one. You can elaborate on that one. Right. I mean, so, seriously. Sure, yeah. for chronic pain, there is a therapy for that. And um, so we may call hypnoanesthesia, hmm. 
where um, on a on a um, from a hypnosis standpoint, we actually are programming them to disassociate themselves with the pain. Okay. So um, they are not feeling it. It's almost like doing a, what we call a hypnoanesthesia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know we have clients that can't take anesthesia for different reasons, right. and so we would use a similar type of therapy okay. um, where we program the mind to not feel the pain. Wow. And they're able to go and have dental work done with no wow. anesthesia or Novocaine. Some people can't take um, right. any type of anesthesia. So that was my next question because mm -hmm. when you said programming the mind not to feel the pain, sure. do you ever have patients that come in? And that's really good because mm -hmm. there are people that fear the dentist or, you know, sure. fear operations, whatever they have. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about anxiety? Oh, because that's yeah. another thing that when you have an illness, mm -hmm. sometimes the medication sure. that you're on, yeah. it creates an anxiety environment. Right. So what do you do for people that seriously have um, anxiety issues? Um, depending on what's causing the anxiety, there is a, a script um, that... I would, let's say if you came in and you would have an anxiety, whatever the cause of it may mm -hmm. be, because typically we know mm -hmm. why we're having the mm -hmm. issue and, and we kind of know what we could do to make it better for okay. ourselves. So I may do a, write up a individualized script mm -hmm. to um, help you cope with whatever situation is going on mm -hmm. to maybe reframe your mind um, on how you view the situation. Okay. And um, in doing that, I mean, I just find that people got, they sort of develop a attitude of, okay, well, this is no big deal. I right. can handle this right. and kind of let the anxiety go. And, you know, and that's the other thing because there's so many um, touch base on mental illness uh, sure. a little bit, just mm -hmm. briefly. Um, there's so many people that, you know, that are depressed. And that's mm -hmm. a lot of it is due to medications. Sure. You know, I, I hate yeah. to say that, but medications, or even if it's not, um, you have so many suicides, which is just yeah. unfortunate in this world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't know what a person's going through sure. in their life. Um, that's why you should always be kind to people, because you don't know what they're going through. But um, just briefly, um, when you have cases like that, um, how do you help people that's going through those type of issues? Are we speaking of the depression? Yeah, or? the depression, you know, people that may be depression on medicine. I mean, do sure. you treat it the same way as someone with anxiety or? Well, there is a different treatment for depression. Right. And um, sometimes we may, I may do an um, interview when mm -hmm. the person comes in and we do a session to kind of figure out what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Um, because sometimes it's the medication. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are depressed, they don't know it's the medication. Right. And so we talk about the onset of it, when did it start? Um, because sometimes you have adults that are depressed, right. and they're depressed about things that happened to them when they were seven years old that they haven't let go of. Right. So um, what may be required sometimes is to do a little bit of um, regression therapy mm -hmm. to take them back to some happy childhood memories mm -hmm. or to take them back to that situation and view it a little bit differently or mm -hmm. to help them let go mm -hmm. of that past trauma. Okay, so before we end the show, mm -hmm. um, can you tell people how they can contact you and um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap everything up? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, um, people can contact me. I am... Um, uh, can I give my... Um, well, they can see it at the end of the oh, show. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. at the end of yeah. the show, mm -hmm. the information will be there on how to contact me. Okay. Um, and um, if I wanted to add something, I would um, say that if... I think that Reiki works for everyone. Mm -hmm. All of us could use stress relaxation, and we all could use some type of healing mm -hmm. in some type of a way. So I would just suggest that anyone try Reiki at least one time okay. to see how it works for them. Well, I know I will try. How I <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I just, I wanted to share just very quickly mm -hmm. um, some of the principles of um, Reiki. Okay. And um, it says, just for today, I will not worry. Mm -hmm. I will not be angry. Mm -hmm. I will be grateful. Mm -hmm. I will do my work honestly, mm -hmm. and I will be kind to my neighbor in all living things. Wow. Reiki really promotes love and well-being. Okay. And um, 
I hope that. No, that's great. I mean, I hope the viewers got that. Um, if you, uh, let me just say this, any viewers that have sarcoidosis mm -hmm. and you're in our area and you would like to be on our show, please contact us. Mm -hmm. If you would like to contact Kimberly Price, look at the uh, credits and by all means to get rid of stress, anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, mental illness, anything, just contact her so she can help you. It's no need in going through this alone. Right. I, I know I will call her. <laughs> And as I always say, and this will be for all my fellow Sarcodonians out there, we all have sarcoidosis, but sarcoidosis does okay. not have us. And mm. let's stay positive. And like Kim Lee Price said, we have to love, like keep Absolutely. that energy, <laughs> keep it going. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.